You guys absolutely love the Larry Bird trash talk stories and this one is one of the greatest and funniest trash talking moments of all time. Now a few months ago I posted a Larry Bird video that did quite well on this channel and it featured Dominique and the Atlanta Hawks but this video is separate to that and this trash talking moment happened a few years later. This is the time that Larry Bird went in on Spud Webb, Dominique Wilkins, Doc Rivers and the whole Atlanta Hawks team and it is hilarious. Larry Bird is one of the greatest players of all time but He's arguably the greatest trash talker of all time as well, and this video proves that. So if you do enjoy videos just like this one, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could hit that like button. If you do enjoy it by the end of the video, subscribe if you are new for videos just like this one. I also want to give full credit to all the podcast interviews and clips used in this video. They are on the screen right now, so be sure to check them out in their entireties. I don't want to keep you guys waiting, so this is the reason why you don't trash talk Larry Bird, and I hope you guys enjoy it. You guys played the Celtics big three in the playoffs, 88. What were those matchups like? They are brutal. We were trying to go at each other's throat. It was unbelievable. I mean, like game seven. Game seven of the 1988 Eastern Conference semifinals for Dominique Wilkins and the Hawks and Larry Bird and the Celtics. It was a time to test their championship resolve. For three quarters, the teams fought to a standstill. But it was only a prelude to what was to come. As the final quarter began, a grueling personal contest of can you top this was about to begin. That's free. Free. Here's one. Two men who brought out the best in each other. While I was in college, I used to watch and get Sports Illustrated, and I remember seeing Dominique Wilkins. I said, man, I would love to play with this guy, not knowing anything about the Hawks, but it was like, I would love to play with him. And then ended up getting drafted by Atlanta. Now Nick's my teammate. And I was like, I mean, a, a dream come true. You think about those Atlanta teams with Dominique and Spud and Doc Rivers. Tree Rollins. And so, we, you know, they, they for sure had, a, had the respect of us. Kevin Willis was a good player. And, um, and and Dominique and Doc Rivers and Spud Webb came off their bench. And Randy Whip, Trey Rollins, Trey Kevin Rollins, Rollins, Kevin, Kevin Willis. Willis, yeah. I Jump mean, Hook, Cliff yeah. Robinson, Cliff Levinson, the original Cliff, big dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were growing. We were young. We were really athletic. We had that 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 energy that a team would need. And all we had to do was build chemistry, begin to understand each other's games, weaknesses, and strengths. And we did that, and we started to flourish after the first four or five years. They were a deep team that could score the ball, and if we weren't at our best, we were in trouble. But with that team, they were so fun to watch because Dominique was the headliner, but everyone else around them. When we talked about Spud Webb, they would come over and play with us across the Georgia Tech. You see, this little joker can flat out go. First small guy getting the dunk contest, win the dunk contest, all that hype around them. The question would be, when it got crunch time, the other team would outsmart them. That was well, their downfall. Well, well, that was a pretty good bunch to not yes. to not win at all. And and they had that one. Remember the the Dominique Larry Bird big yep. shootout. Yeah. It's Game Seven in 1988 against the Atlanta Hawks. Dominique and Larry Bird. One of the most clutch mm -hmm. moments. I remember watching it as a kid. Got me hype. I went outside and started shooting outside <laughs> of the playground. Yeah. Ten and I was both of y'all. But 1988. That had yeah. to be one of the best moments. Conference semifinals. Neek and Bird. Game seven, the Dominique mm. Bird series. Shot time. for shot. Shot for shot. Dominique and Bird going back and forth. You know, we we, we should have eliminated, eliminated them in six. Well, the whole series was crazy. Uh, game one and two, the Celtics won by like a combined 80 points. Like they blew us out. As the Hawks found themselves down to the final gasp. 
but back home in the Omni, they were flying high. The offensive spark plug, little Spud Webb, found a way to slither through the Celtic defense, putting together a career-best playoff performance and igniting the Hawks to a much-needed victory. I remember coming back from Game 3 to Atlanta, and a big article uh, in Atlanta uh, Journal was put a fork in them, we're done. You know, and then we win Game 3 and then win Game 4, go into Boston, uh, and win game five. And that was a great game. I thought, I think we took control. The Atlanta Hawks just will not surrender to the favored Boston Celtics. It's kind of a clash of two worlds. In Bird, you've got somebody who's already an icon. He's already been uh, sanctified as a Boston Saint. And Dominique represents a different kind of basketball. We had him, Matt, the one time we were up 3-2. We won game five. Uh, in Boston, we was not supposed to win that game, you know, the critics say. So we knew going to game six, I said, man, we could we could advance and we can beat these guys. The frenetic Hawks, led by the Freakazoid, had old school Boston by the throat. Up three games to two in the best of seven series. All Atlanta has to do is go down to Atlanta and close the series out. And then the last play in game six, um, it was, you know, Dominique and I were the two guys that score. And at the end of the game, we drew up a play. Uh, I called a timeout because they knew what we were running. Uh, we called another one. It turned into a broken play. I inbound the ball to Cliff Livingston, and he was supposed to dribble handoff to either me or Dominique. DJ read it, uh, and he topsided me. Uh, Cliff looked at Dominique, and then Cliff went on his own. Went to back with left hand, uh, running hook. I was mad. Cliff's right-handed. He shot a left-handed hook shot. Livingston, no. Boston has won the game. Because the play was supposed to come to me, and I'm like, what do you, don't break the play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we ended up losing that game, and after the game. And I remember this old lady at the airport. I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. She may have been 80. Um, you know, had her little purse and she walked up to me. Hey, Rivers, you thought you wasn't coming back, did you? I, I, I will <laughs> never forget that. I wish I knew who that lady was. Uh, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win in Boston. Well, they had their chance. You know, they had a big chance uh, to beat us. I think now that we're going to come out and, and play like we did tonight, but we're going to be at home, and um, our shots are going to be dropping a little bit better, and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. And we had to look at that, right? I guarantee a win. Atlanta blew their opportunity. And I'm like, hey, I don't know what Bird talking about. I, we have a great opportunity. We going in there. We going to kick their butt. We coming to win. It, it, I don't care what he said. We get to Boston, and we walk out of the locker room, and I stop. I said, we going to win this bleep bleep game. I said, if you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war. If you guys ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't even come out in the court. Don't come out here. I said, whoever guarding me tonight going to have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in the other <laughs> locker room. In the other locker room to, to his teammates. So, it, it, um, and set up for one of the greatest shootouts ever in the seventh game. And I remember Larry Bird, he uh, he passed by a locker room. He like, there's nobody in here can guard me. <laughs> but he was just playing, playing though. Yeah, yeah, because he was free. I remember before this big game against Dominique that Larry was out shooting. And I was out shooting early at one end of the court. Larry was down at the other end. And I noticed that Larry was down there like shooting left-handed jump hooks from like 12, 15 feet. Now he made left-handed shots, but I saw him shooting right-handed jump hooks from 12 or 15 feet. And I went down there and go like, what are you doing? He goes, my Achilles tendons are killing me. My step back isn't, it won't work tonight. I need that jump hook. And he made something that game. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That just tells you his confidence and tells you what, what kind of a player he was just to have a game plan of what shots he was going to make that night. So it, it, um, it set up for one of the greatest shootouts ever in the, in the seventh game. Despite Bird's brash words, the Hawks seemed unintimidated. And it would quickly become apparent that if Larry was to make good on his prediction, he would have to contend with a high-flying Dominique Wilkins, who would simply play the game of his life. came into game seven with the right mindset, uh, believing that we would have a chance to win game seven. 
you know, it was one of those Sundays in the Boston Garden, uh, hot, uh, you know, crowd crazy. Uh, they expected they were going to win. Uh, I don't think they expected to have a, a tussle like they had in that game. Game seven would go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominic was an unstoppable player. No guy could guard him in the league man for man. You could see his competitiveness. You could see his determination in that game seven. There was only one player on the floor who could match his will. Six points on the drive. Parrish picks for Bird. Gets the roll. Shooting hand wide open. Bird with a very difficult angle gets it to fall. And I remember he only had 12 points going to fourth quarter. I remember coming down the floor. And I remember myself, Larry Bird, and Kevin Willis. I really believe this. The reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game, in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court. We run down the court, and Kevin reached across me, put his hands, and puts his finger in Larry Bird's chest. Set. So I said, don't let this so-and-so score anymore tonight. Kevin Willis came over and said, Neek, don't let him score tonight. And Bird's standing around. Next time, I'm looking at Kevin. Uh, what you doing? What are you doing? You know, his bird eyes got like this big. You don't want to wake a sleeping giant. <laughs> he got 12 points. Right, don't, don't wake him up. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. Hey, hey, Let him stay asleep. Sleep, yes. What you doing? Woke him up. You don't wake up a sleeping giant. <laughs> and his eyes got that big. You know, it's like his eyes it's got this big. I look at Kevin. What are you doing? And from that point, it was it was a shooting match. That fourth quarter was unbelievable. Larry was torturing him. Dominique was torturing me on, on when he had the ball. That fourth quarter, maybe the best fourth quarter as far as uh, mono mono of all time. Bird gets it in low on the tunnel. I gotta come down there offensively. I gotta carry the load now. I gotta keep us going. It's Bird's turn. And I remember sitting down before the fourth quarter and I'm watching the game. And I remember they took me out for a blow and Kevin and uh, Cliff Livingston came in the game and he got hot. And I remember Coach said, All right, Nick, go in there and slow him down. I said, Slow him down. He hot now. He forget <laughs> that. Yeah. That's the only thing I can do is try to match him bucket for bucket. That's what turned out one of the greatest. Fourth quarter's ever. So we're playing, and the ball goes up. You know how you, you, you clear space? You right. get that rebound every day. You're not even worried about it. Because I push it, and I, I go up to get it. And all of a sudden, man, there's just a force all over my shoulder. <laughs> he grabs it. He dunks it. You know those short shorts? <laughs> they were right here. I tell you right now. I, I mean, he threw that thing down, and I was like, oh, my. And Larry has the classic line. Larry goes, shoot, I better, better box that guy out. I can't. I said, yeah, I suggest, I suggest you put a body on him. That was one of the craziest things ever. I'd never seen a guy that high in my life. Oh he just threw God. it down. Short shorts right here, huh, kid? Right here, baby. That was not, I still have nightmares about that, Smitty. <laughs> Obviously. You had 47 in that yes. game. Larry Bird had 34, but 20 of those in that quarter. But like I said, I think he ended up with 34 for the game. And the duel continues. I don't think it was the, uh, uh, so much edge they had. I just thought it was a player that they had. And that was Larry Bird. It's Bird's turn who basically put the team on his shoulders in that fourth quarter. The Celtics are ahead of the Atlanta Hawks. 84-82 will return to the Garden. Man, make it easier for him to bring the ball up. Bird now cuts free. The defense. Tied at 88 with Bird again pulling up. Putting Boston ahead. Bird attempting to break free. Stays with it and the foul. Dominique was pretty much 
the whole game, Larry, uh, the fourth quarter, uh, kind of then, uh, you know, carried their team. That's what made him so great. Because if they come double, he's going to make the right play. Um, and the game wasn't that complicated for him. And he made some tough shots. Like I said, some left-handed running hooks. And, you know, and again, he wasn't he wasn't feeling great at that time of the year, at that moment. And um, to watch him just gut it out and just to will his body to even finish that game, let alone score 20 in the fourth quarter of a game seven is is mind-boggling to me. Larry Bird, Larry Bird that night was, listen, uh, it, it was unbelievable. And he was so clutch. Meek was just as clutch that night. It's just that Larry in the fourth quarter was unstoppable. So clutch is not just the final yeah. three or four seconds of the game. And the thing is, we were sending everybody at him to slow him down. He was so hot that I think one of the shots he hit was a left-handed three. That's when you know a guy is in yeah. the zone. Stays with it and the foul is called. The continuation for Larry Bird. Two lead changes. The Celtics once were up by seven. Dominique hits a three. Because they knew who was going to get the ball. It's like Robert Parrish always said, 40,000 eyes on Larry Bird because they knew he was going to get the ball. And uh, we knew it, our opponents knew it. Now it's just up to them to stop it. And it's Bird. The Boston Celtics will win this series. Man, he was doing a little bit of everything. I don't know really what he was doing in that fourth quarter, but the stuff that he was doing, it was unbelievable, man. I mean, he was throwing left-hand shots, running hooks. Uh, his game was at another level. We was trying to match each other's will. 20 of his 34 in the fourth quarter. Dominique had... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Larry Bird hit more clutch shots, you know, in pressure situations than... Than any place. They told yeah. you about each and every one, right? You talked about Larry Bird saying someone's got to lose this game. When did he say that to you? Early in the fourth or late in the fourth? No, it was late in the fourth quarter. Um, it was it was probably like, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds to go in the game. I think it was a timeout or we were taking the ball out of the bounds. I can't remember what it was, but I remember him saying that. And that was, he said, you know, we both deserve to win, but somebody got to go home. And man, to his credit, man, he took the Celtics and put them on his back. And he would call the spot. Yeah. yeah. You know, but he never called a spot against me. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, that's got a best respect. respect. When I tell people Larry Bird talk trash. Yes, and let you know. <laughs> let you know every time. But it, it ain't the trash. It wasn't the trash word with the meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, I'm going to shoot left handed this time. Right, or, right. Or, or why you put you a white boy guard. I did a Pretty much that was it. I mean, that was one of the greatest performances I've seen from a guy in those circumstances. Cause you're talking about seventh game in the playoffs. To carry his team the way he did in that fourth quarter. When you talk about the clutch shots, he hit 10 clutch shots I was gonna in say. that game. It was crazy too, because it's rare in a game, you feel it. Like, you know, you guys have been in games where after the game, people say, man, that was the most amazing game, but you were in it. And you are like, you know, I, I, I didn't feel that. I knew it was mm -hmm. a good game. Right. That was one of the few games I was you saying, knew it. this, this was, was a hell of a game right it. now. <laughs> it was a hell of a game. You know? Absolutely. Yeah.
he's like poetry in motion. I mean, he knew how to play the game before you even got got to him. And it was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. One left to ponder what might have been, the other to lead his team on. And let me know what you thought about this video down below in the comment section. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy the video. Hit that like button if you want to support the channel. And here are two new videos I think that you will also enjoy. So be sure to check them out. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.